Hello. Uh, this is the first video in a series of videos on macroeconomics. Uh, macroeconomics uh, is always a feature of any uh, A-level, AS-level or IB um, school-level study of economics. And it always comes after the study of microeconomics because where microeconomics uh, teaches us the the building blocks, if you like, uh, the, the essentials uh, of economic theory right down to the point of a, of a single market, we need that theory to then go on and, and make head or tail of the entire economy, indeed the entire national economy or features of the entire global economy. So this video aims to give you uh, an introduction to macroeconomics and the very first thing that you have to be aware of as you study macroeconomics is how is it that we know how to view something as large and complex as a national economy. To be able to do that we need to be able to read the economy. We need to be able to look for signals or signs that that economy is functioning well or is not functioning well is functioning better or worse than a, another economy that we could also read, we can make comparisons, or to make comparisons over time where we could look at the state of the economy today and look at how it was at some previous point in time and make judgments about the quality or standard of our economy. Now there are hundreds of ways of, of doing that, but economists studying a national economy will look predominantly at four macroeconomic indicators that will give them an insight as to the state of the economy and the movement of that economy for the better or for the worse. Politicians will also look at these indicators as they try to formulate their economic policy and theoretical economists look at this data as well, these four macroeconomic indicators, because they want to be able to uh, test theories that they are building about how the economy functions. So what are these four macroeconomic indicators? Well, the first of them is the economic growth rate. The growth rate of the economy. The growth rate of the economy looks at the speed at which GDP is increasing. GDP is the value of all the goods and services produced in an economy in a single year. When GDP rises, that's economic growth in an economy. Famously, China is growing at about 10% a year, although the, the prediction for the year 2015 is that it will have one of its slowest rates of growth. GDP will only rise by 7.7%, it is predicted. The Eurozone will only grow by one, a little bit over 1% in 2015, it is predicted. The USA and the UK are going to be growing at about 3 or 2% this year. So when growth happens, it's measured as a percentage rise of GDP. And that's a great macroeconomic indicator because the growth rate, the higher it is, the more successful the economy has uh, performed in that time. So it's a very important indicator. A second indicator is the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate, of course, recording the number of people, uh, well, the proportion of people in the workforce who are seeking work but cannot find paid employment. And there's a very precise way of measuring that. It's called the ILO, the International Labour Organization, count for measuring the unemployment rate and this is done monthly because it's incredibly important data uh, to know whether more or less people are being unsuccessful in their quest for finding work. All kinds of reasons, of course, all kinds of causes uh, and influences uh, affect that unemployment rate but as a piece of data it's an incredibly important macroeconomic indicator. A third indicator is the inflation rate. 
the inflation rate measures the speed at which the average price level in the economy is rising. And normally it is rising. And governments have an objective of keeping the inflation rate under control. Most governments are aiming for low levels of inflation, They're aiming for targets of about 2% because they feel that that's the healthiest state for the inflation rate uh, in their economy. Currently, as I speak to you, in early 2015, the Eurozone, the Eurozone, those 19 countries with the Euro, actually have deflation, where prices are actually falling at an average rate of half a percent per year. And that is deemed uh, undesirable. And so just this week, as I speak, the European Union's uh, European Central Bank has taken action to try and stimulate the economy. Uh, they do not want deflation, something we'll study later in this macroeconomic course. So how did they know that that was happening? They were able to use a macroeconomic indicator, the rate of inflation, carefully calculated, that informed them that in fact the average price level was falling. That alerted them to that problem and now they are formulating the policy to deal with that. So the inflation rate, again calculated monthly, is an incredibly important test for the state of the economy at any given time. Finally, a fourth macroeconomic indicator is the state of the current account. The current account position. The current account is part of a document called the balance of payments which records all the flows of money in and out of a country in a single year. And Countries wish to avoid large current account deficits. The current account will be in deficit or surplus. A deficit indicates that the country has more outflows of money than inflows. They are spending more on buying imports than they are selling exports to other countries. So if they buy in more imports than they sell exports, it means that more money is flowing out pay for the imports they're buying, than is flowing in, earned from the exports they're selling. That means there's a net outflow of money. And if that net outflow is large enough, and if it is persistent enough, it is damaging for an economy. So governments and economists will look carefully at the current account position uh, that indicates the success or not, the competitiveness or not, of a country as it trades as it specialises and trades uh, in the global economy. So these four economic indicators give a very good uh, assessment of the state of the economy at any given time. And they're very important data, that they are very important data for, for both economists and politicians. Put it like this, if uh, a doctor wished to assess the health of uh, a person who arrived at their clinic um, they, would, they would run a series of tests on that person. Perhaps they would take their blood pressure, maybe do some blood tests, take their temperature, maybe a, a urine test, um, and so forth. And from the data they, they received from that, they could make a judgment, a, a quick judgment about the state of the, um, the patient. So it is with, with politicians and statisticians and economists who wish to run quick tests or make quick judgments, rather, on the state of the economy. These would be the primary uh, indicators that they would use. Of course, they would look at other things. They would look at the Gini coefficient, which records the relative inequality of income across uh, the citizens uh, of, of an economy. They would pr probably look at environmental data to assess the damage or not and, the, and, and, and whether it's increasing or not, the state of the environment's uh, degradation uh, and the impact of business activity on the economy. Because it's all very well having growth, but uh, not, uh, it's not good to have rising GDP if it's causing uh, such damage to the, to the environment that it's going to be unsustainable anyway. And so there is, there's several other pieces of data, of course, they would look at, but these are the four main macroeconomic indicators. And the study of macroeconomics pre-university 
at schools where there is AS level, A level, and IB, this, these indicators are used to a great extent. And it's important for you as students to be able to understand how each of these pieces of data is calculated to be able to assess the strengths and the weaknesses of the calculation methods of these, how true are these uh, are the figures that we use for these indicators. And it's also important for you as students to understand how we use these pieces of data to make the readings that we need to read about the economy. And as you study the government's objectives when it comes to the economy, you'll learn that the government's economic objectives are based around these four indicators. They want strong growth rates, they want low unemployment rates, they want low inflation rates, but not too low, not zero, and they want a healthy current account position. They want to avoid large persistent current account deficits. So, as macroeconomics is the study of phenomena within national and global uh, economy, it's important that you are able to read this data and see how governments use this data to understand where they are with their policies and where they need to formulate uh, further policy to improve, to reach their targets, targets based upon these macroeconomic indicators. Well, I hope that uh, serves as an introduction to macroeconomics. Uh, I hope you all found that useful and that you'll continue to uh, make use of the videos and derive some uh, benefit from them. And of course, if you're not deriving benefit from them, you won't watch them anyway. So anyway, um, thanks very much and I look forward to getting your feedback. Bye bye.